Let's take a look at how to transfer and edit multiple tracks of audio as a group here using Melodyne 4 and Pro Tools. I've got three tracks of audio, Mail Backup 1, 2, and 3. I've got uh, Mail Backup 2, pan to the center, Mail Backup 1, pan all the way 100% to the left, and Mail Backup 3, pan all the way 100% to the right. Let's take a listen. Somebody save me from myself. Somebody save me from myself. Cool. Now, just by listening to this naturally, I can hear that there is a little bit of dissonance here and there, maybe some sibilance issues, and quite possibly some phasiness, which often occurs when singers accurately double track themselves. And that phasiness can really take away from uh, the, the body of the audio, especially when you're trying to create space in your mix and want to make definition in the left and right speakers. So why don't we get started here? I'm going to insert Melodyne. Let's start at the uh, bottom mill backup track three and Celimony Melodyne. Just select it there and put it on its first insert track. Now I'm going to use a little shortcut. I'm going to hold Option and Copy and paste that plugin on the preceding two tracks. So now you got Mail Backup 1 here, 1 there, 2, 2, and 3, and 3. Now we have to transfer the audio. So I'm going to select Transfer, and Melodyne's basically going to have to just listen to the audio once to make all the editing tools available to you. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to take it from bar 111 and let's transfer up to about bar 119. Somebody save me from myself. Somebody save me from myself. Now, when I stop playback, you see the audio is immediately analyzed and now it's ready for editing here in Melodyne's uh, editing window. I have select focus right here on uh, backup track three. Here's take two and take one. Now, the way I get started with this is I usually create myself what's called an anchor track. That's a verbiage that I use, but it works for me. And what that means is I want one definitive track to be my reference track that everything's going to be edited in reference to. In this case, I'm choosing mail backup two because that's the one I have panned in the center. And you could work, you know, when whatever workflow works for you, but that's the way I'm going to start with this. So Mail Backup 2 is going to be my center anchor reference track. Let's zoom in a little bit and let's check out what we're uh, seeing here. Now, down here in the bottom, I'm going to open up right here my scale editor in depth, and it's going to give me more information regarding uh, the tuning, what, uh, what key I'm in, for example, like E major, which Melodyne accurately identified. Now, if it didn't, uh, perhaps there's a note or two that might have been off, like let's say this F sharp here, right here, could have been more of a G than perhaps it may have incorrectly identified it, but that would be because it's really referencing the audio that it's trying to read and understand. So keep that in mind. You always want to make sure that you're in the right key before you start doing any, any editing at all. Now to play Mail Backup 2, let's just double click in the note editor here and we'll only hear this track that I have select focus on. Somebody save me from myself. So looking at this right away, I like to focus on the most obvious possible edits to begin with. And that's going to be right here at bar 118. Let's zoom in on this. I'm noticing that there is a grace here. There's the pitch line seems to be doing something. Melodyne uh, is going to play it back the way it was recorded but perhaps it wasn't as articulately performed by the artist to begin with. Let's take a listen and keep an eye on this area here. Okay, so clearly there's two notes trying to be sung there. So to correct this, simply come here and choose my note separation tool. I'm gonna to come right in the middle and divide that note. And sure enough, there's enough energy in those two sections now to denote spaces on the scale area uh, for two separate notes. And it should be a little bit more, have a little more diction now. And that's what we want. Okay, so start with the obvious, thing, obvious things first because sometimes those are gonna give you the most 
uh, instant gratification. You know, it's going to give you the results you want right away. And the little things like this do go a long way. Uh, let's go back to the, let's work forwards back. Let's take this first area. Now, again, remember, I'm, I'm going to really make this one sound great because it's going to be my reference track. If I select a note like this here in the information bar, I can see it says it's an average of minus 12 cents flat in the key of E major. What about this long note that's almost two measures long? This one's about nine cents flat. So let's say in this case, the producer wanted everything to be spot on in tonal center. Well, one way we could do that is I like to work in, in regions. I'll select a range of notes like this, come up, select my pitch macro here, and I'm going to activate snap to E flat. And what this is going to do is move some of the most out of two notes into the key of E flat major to begin with. And as I increase my percentage slider, you'll see the notes are popping themselves up closer to tonal center. Now you can do this to any degree that you choose. And I, and I recommend that if you have backing reference tracks that you, you do this while listening to them as well. So you can get a better idea of when they lock in musically with your background audio. All right. And when you're done, hit OK. Somebody save me from myself. Now, he does a really great job holding that note. If you wanted to tweak the pitch driftiness, come down under my pitch tool, choose drift. And we can equalize this. I can make it a little more linear. And it still has a lot of that natural human characteristics to it. So that's cool. Uh, let's do the next section. Let me select this range of audio and we'll do the same. Let me select uh, the snap to E flat and you'll see right here where this F note right here, this note is closer to F is going to slide down automatically down to E when I do this. It's going to change the direction of where that note's going to move when I now adjust the slider. Okay, there we go. And I'll actually automate the drift a little bit with the drift slider. Again, I would be doing this in reference to the backing tracks, but this is just a demo example, which I want to show the process of using these tools. Somebody save me from myself. All right. So let's say you got what you want now. Here's our anchor track. Let's change the select focus from orange to gray. This allows you to see the information and hear it, but it makes it uneditable. Now, on top of that, I'm going to hold my command key here and I'm going to select mail backup one, and it's going to overlay that track on top of what we were looking at. So we can see what's going to begin working together and what might give us some possible dissonance in, in uh, regarding to the harmony performance. And right away, we can see that same area here. Here's that same note. So why don't we start there? I'll split this again. And there we have this part will now match that one more accurately. So there we have um, Mail Backup 1, which is in the left ear. If you're listening to this in stereo, I recommend headphones. All right, so now we're transferring this audio. We're doing some editing. We're taking this one step at a time, and we're doing some detail listening, which I highly always recommend. And again, let's see. Um, I can select this range of audio. Choose my macro again, and let's bring it in. And we always want to be mindful of the potential phasiness, you know, because you want some differentiation between these tracks, but you don't want them to be too similar either because you don't want to incur some phasiness, which can happen. Let's take a look at this region right here. Somebody save me from myself. That seems to be working okay. Let's move on to the next phrase of this passage Somebody save me from myself. all right let's zoom in right here now this is going to give you some dissonant tones uh you've got a d sharp and an e major here okay so what i want to do is decide i want to bring these two notes to match my reference anchor track right there so it's closer in pitch save me from myself I could pop that one down a little bit more. Save me from myself. And these are the little things. They all add up. Everything you do is cumulative here. Okay. So let's take a listen down here. I think it's some sibilance. You can scrub in Melanine's uh, timeline. 
So when you see something down here and up here, uh, and I listen to it closely, it's sibilance. There's no real pitch value to it, but we could use melanine to do some de-essing. Well, why don't we do that really quickly, just to show you how. Okay, so there would be some S's right there. I could separate that out and take my amplitude tool and lower that S. And I like doing this. I'll tell you why, because sibilance can also be cumulative when you're when you're editing and mixing your audio. You know, it'll it'll really create a, a buildup of, of harshness. Uh, so using tools like the amplitude tool to DS your audio here in Melodyne is honestly a, a really handy and fast feature. You saw how easy it was for me to separate that, choose my amplitude tool, notch down a little bit, and ready to go. Now, let me deactivate select focus on track one and go to track three. Bring that one in. And let's do some comparative listening now to the reference track. Somebody save me from myself. Now, I actually kind of like the way that one's working with the reference track. Let's take a listen to the second part. Somebody save me from myself. Again, you can hear that same dissonance here. Let me scrub right here. So let's fix that, just like we did in the mail backup one. I'll take my pitch tool and pop these notes up to select them both and double click and then bring them into tonal center. All right, let's take a listen. Um, I'm gonna select this whole range of notes in this passage. Choose my macro again. Okay, everything looks good so far. And let's lock it in a little bit. Just uh, go about 91% and tweak the drift a little bit and hit OK to commit your edit. Somebody save me from myself. Okay, now I'm going to switch back to my center track here. Okay, this one here. And I want to bring this D sharp, the beginning of that, to um, E major. I heard something when I was comparing it here with the mail backup three. I wanted that to be the same. Somebody save me from myself. All right, now let's put it all together. Okay. So here we have track one, three. Here, track one, two, and three. All now completely edited, and uh, and it looks a lot better, but how does it sound? Now, down here in the bottom right of the window, right here, we have the spread unison button. By toggling this, I can see overlapping audio. It does not affect the pitch at all. Just allows me to fan it out and see what's behind each other, and I can do some editing that way. So let's layer them back and take a listen. Somebody save me from myself. much better it's more clear there's some articulation we applied here especially in the uh, in the uh, last two notes did a little bit of de-essing but another trick i'll show you really quickly while we're here is to create a differentiation this is the same singer singing the same parts three times and i'll give you a handy little tip here i'm going to go back to select focus on my center track because this is my middle track I'm going to do a little handy trick here that I'll show you. I'm going to select all my audio and choose my four-man tool. And I'm going to bring this down fairly low. I'd say about two, 200, 210% here, 210 cents. Take a listen to this. Somebody save me. So here's before. Somebody save me. And here's after. Somebody save me. The reason why I'm going to do that is I want to add a little bit of weight to that center image. So when I play it all back with the left, right, and center, the center track may have a little bit more body to it. Take a listen. Somebody save me from myself. And here's without. Here we go. Somebody save me from myself. So I was 
using my keyboard commands to do undo and redo that and you can hear it right here in the bottom uh the last section here somebody save me from myself just a little bit of weight there and now we can do the same with the sides if i bring in my mail backup one i can select this and raise the format a little bit about a hundred cents and do the same with the right side bring that one and raise this and so i'm changing the tonality a little bit the timbre of the sides and the center and again you want to do this listening to the lead vocal and the backup mu music as well but this is just a technique that really works for me to create more of a stereo definition in your mix let's bring these three tracks in together take a listen now somebody save me from myself there now we did quite a bit of editing here hopefully you picked up some tips and tricks and something you can use along the way to help uh, increase the workflow and the creativity in your sessions thanks for watching